Account Setup, and Activation. Before you get started collaborating on cases and sharing digital evidence with other investigators, you must first set up your account and configure the service for use. To set up your account, the first thing you must do is activate your account. Take a look in the email account that was used to sign you up. You should have received an invitation email to join the service. If you cannot find this message, take a look in your spam or junk email folder in case it was marked as such by your email server, which happens with automated emails sometimes. From the invitation email, click on the Activate Account button. This should bring the service up in a web browser and prompt you to log in with your email address. Once you log in, you'll be redirected to another website where you'll need to enter the temporary password included in the email. If you cannot sign in, click on the Can't Access Your Account link to reset your password, or contact your system administrator if you're using an Active Directory account. You'll be prompted to enter a new password, and you can click Update Password and Sign In to continue, which will bring you to the service's homepage. From here, you will need to create departments for your organization. Next, create user groups so you can assign the same access policy to multiple users for a case or file. After that, you should create individual user accounts for other users who will be accessing the service. Your next step will be to create categories for the different types of incidents you will be managing so you can properly classify these incidents when creating cases. Set the security policies next, which will restrict or allow users to access files not associated with a case, access audit trails and create e-discovery receipts, delete cases and files, restore cases and files from the recycle bin, protect cases and files from deletion, and manage devices. Most of these sections either permit or allow a user to do what is described, depending on if the user is on the list. For files not associated with a case, we need to add users who can access the files, but also say what kind of access they should have. A user can be set to only view a file, view and download it, edit a file, meaning they can change the information listed within the file, or manage a file, which is the highest access and allows full control of the file data and sharing. Speaking of files, next to the security policies is the retention policies, where you can define how long to keep a case or file once it has been deleted from the system, or when to automatically delete cases and files. The Account Information tab contains all the relevant information about your organization, such as the logo, contact email and phone number, address, and the website for your company. If you have terms and conditions to display when requesting files from others, or want guests to accept a Terms and Conditions document before entering the service, you can set that up from the bottom of the page. Finally, Report Templates and Request Forms can be set up in the last two tabs. Take a look in the online help for more information and a video concerning each of these steps.